think there's not as big a problem. Um, and, and that's what I'm questioning is that, that there's not really a rape crisis. In all this charged atmosphere, Newsweek's current cover story poses a question that is on a lot of people's minds. Sexual correctness has it gone too far. I'm Callie Corey. Recently, the mainstream media have focused a lot on stories that call into question the seriousness of date rape. With headlines like rape hype, crying rape, and sexual correctness has it gone too far, reporters have criticized many feminists for being too victim-oriented and have accused them of exaggerating the figures on sexual assault and rape to make it appear that there is an epidemic when there isn't one. In this program, we're going to examine how this media campaign came about and what drove it. Specifically, we're going to look at how the media changed their position from one that recognized date rape as a serious problem in 1987 to one that by 1993 dismissed it as rape hype. One of the central players in this story is a young graduate student from Princeton University, Katie Royfe, who in 1993 wrote a book entitled The Morning After, sex, fear, and feminism on campus. The book itself is a flimsy and superficial look at the issue. As University of Southern California law professor Susan Estrich puts it, a paragraph of opinion shamelessly expanded to a book. However, the media's attention to the book has been anything but flimsy. They have focused a tremendous amount of attention on it and on Katie Royfe, using her ideas to change the way America thinks about sexual assault, particularly on college campuses. As we'll see, books don't have to be good to be taken up by the media. They just have to say things that powerful people in the media want to hear. This program is not about Katie Royfe's book, but about the ways in which the media has reported on and represented sexual assault in general, and date rape specifically, ways which deny the reality of all forms of sexual assaults against women. <laughs> 